Hey guys, and welcome to the new episode of Automated Seller Podcast. Today I have a special guest, Tom Levin, uh, owner of Blaze, Amazon copywriting and uh, technical solution company. Hi, Tomer. How are you? Hi, Jacob. It's great to be here. Thank you for inviting me. Sure, sure. Uh, so yeah, me and Tom, uh, we met at the conference the conference at, uh, in Tel Aviv. I know that you are also based in Tel Aviv, so it was actually, um, you know, it was local for you. Uh, are there actually yeah. many conferences in, in Tel Aviv related to Amazon? Yeah, so uh, I live uh, right next to Tel Aviv, like 15 minutes away. Uh, and um, Israel uh, is not that much of a base for uh, Amazon conferences, but uh, the, 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 this, that uh, conference that we that we met uh, was one of the better ones. Um, uh, most of these uh, conferences, the great conferences, <laughs> are abroad. Uh, Vegas with Prosper Show is, you know, the most uh, most well known, uh, but others in Europe as well. Uh, and I think uh, Yael Kabili and her team uh, put up a very very good conference uh, with uh, loads of uh, very good lecturers and very good content. And it was great meeting you guys. Oh yeah, it, it was a really good conference. Also, like the networking there, it it really worked for us. I've mean, I've met so many. Uh, people there i also invited them here on a podcast and uh afterwards I, I already managed to go to one more conference in lithuania and uh, i also met some guys who were at tel aviv like brent for example he was i think a speaker um vincenzo he was also yeah. a speaker and then uh, in the other conference so i really like this community that uh, once you start going to those conferences you you see those faces over and over it's it's really something that before jumping to Amazon world, like with our company, I didn't really feel attached to any other industries where we were developing uh, software. So it's great. And I know that you are in the space for, with Blaze, you are there for like nine years, but then before that you were actually a seller. And I really wonder, um, what's your story? Like, how did you uh, first started with Amazon then actually transform to the um, Blaze? Yeah, so everything was very a very natural process for me. Uh, before doing e-commerce, I worked as an IT technician in one of the high-tech companies in Israel, which is called Checkpoint. Uh, it is a very well-known company, which uh, deals with uh, cybersecurity. Um, so I worked there for several years and uh, just, uh, just switched to e-commerce uh, way back in 2013. Um, that's when I started selling on eBay, done that for, for a year, and then I uh, discovered Amazon. I uh, found out about Amazon from, from a friend. Uh, I've done this. There were no courses or anything like of that sort at the time, um, which is pretty funny when you think about it now because there are so many courses at the moment. Um, and got into private label with one-on-one -on -one with, a, with a colleague uh, and started my private label business. Uh, done that for six years and during that time i started doing um uh, like outsourcing our copywriting uh experience uh, on amazon to clients so everything was very fluid and very natural and back in 20, 2020 i sold my private label business for an exit uh so that was very cool uh and ever since 2020 I, i'm doing the copywriting stuff uh full time so that's why, the story. why did you actually why did you actually decide to 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 go to to do copywriting uh, full time rather than I don't know maybe starting another brand on Amazon after the exit? Yeah. So <laughs> the thing is that um, I'm a how do you say like a, I'm a control freak, uh, and I've done the all aspects of the business on Amazon from A to Z uh, for over six years. Mm -hmm. And I, I was just exhausted. I needed a break. Um, so it was clear for me that I want to end this project, uh, if I can end it with a good value, uh, like I did eventually, then it would be better. Uh, but I had to like I had to get the break. Um, during that time in the last year, uh, before I sold the company, uh, I started getting requests from colleagues and friends in the community. Um, to get helps with, you know, copywriter as well as other asking like for a photographer or things like that. And I had an internal copywriter in my team. 
Like it was me and the copywriting. That's it. That's the entire thing. I did everything on Amazon, but I didn't do the copywriting because to me, when I think about it, when I want to sell to an audience, for me, it's talking with them on their native language, whether it's the USA with Amazon.com, whether it's uh, Amazon CO UK for the, uh, for the uh, English people, the French, Italians, whatever. You have to get someone that speaks the, their language, their native language, and understands the nuances in this language. So other than, other than me, there was a copywriter in my team. Uh, we were just like two people. And then um, when people, colleagues, asked me about a recommendation for a copywriter, for me, I said, listen, I have a, an in-house copywriter. We don't offer this as a service, but thanks. Uh, and one colleague uh, convinced me, and it just started from there, and it blew up to what it is today, where we have 12 people, where I have 12 people in my staff. We handle not just uh, American English for Amazon.com. We handle, I think, 90% of the languages in, in Amazon in the world uh, for starting in like English UK, Spanish, Italian, French, um, uh, Dutch, even Japanese, every, everything from A to Z on Amazon that handles copywriting. I have the staff that handles this with local copywriters worldwide. Awesome. So also just for our listeners, because uh, they may not fully understand, like, what what exactly do you think by saying Amazon copywriting? Because um, it might sound like you only do, like, um, copywriting for, for the actual listings, but I know that there's much more um, yeah. into this, right? So could you actually describe what exactly uh, you're doing to help Amazon, to, uh, Amazon sellers to actually um, sell? Yeah, of course. So Amazon, if you... If you want to uh, divide the advertising on Amazon, you get the sponsored advertising, which is PPC and all you know the pay-per-click uh, ads, and you have the organic ranking. And the organic advertising it comes solely from the copy within the Amazon listing. So if you don't have, so I'll, I'll speak like on the negative side, right? So if you don't have a list, a listing which knows what the customers are looking for in the listing itself you'll directly pay more for outside uh, advertising, sponsored ads, PPC, etc. So you have to get both done correctly. And the, the crucial thing that we do when before we start the copywriting, uh, like I think I can assess it in 80% or 90% of the thing that we do for the listing is getting the keyword research done properly. So we analyze all the competitors. We use all the latest tools in the market. Data Dive, Helium 10, Brand Analytics, Google Trends even, and we analyze all the competitors from A to Z to understand, to fully understand the market, the keyword, to do the keyword research as, as best, as good as possible, uh, understand which keywords customers are looking for, uh, understanding what they are not looking for or what is uh, more competitive, because we need to understand what is relevant to uh, the client's specific product or not. And only then we build the listing according to Amazon's algorithm and create the listing, which yeah. eventually is the copyright for the listing. That's that's exactly what I wanted to to talk, talk about because I know that also like the, you said that you're using Data Dive. It's a company of Brandon, right? Like he was actually yeah. the previous guest on on, on my podcast. So we we <laughs> we, I, we just talked about that. Um, so I really like this data driven approach. So I know that. Yeah. Uh, he especially said, said that, but I'm really wondering also what, what's your takeaway on this. Um, so regarding using tools like AI right now, like uh, what's hot mm -hmm. right now, of course, is ChatGPT 3.5. Um, you have ChatGPT 4. And there's so yeah. many people that just think that you can just go there and write, hey, chat, um, I have this product to create like the Amazon um, description uh, for this listing. And then people think that, hey, that's it, right? Um, and I know that. Yeah it's not the right approach because you have zero knowledge regarding the actual keyword like you haven't done any research so now yeah. having um tools like data dive helium 10 and having your your copywriting skills i wonder what's your takeaway on creating like the perfect listing and how this um how what's your approach on that like can you actually build maybe a perfect listing without that just using by chat gpt or yeah like overall What's your um... so yeah, that's a very good question. That's a obviously it's a very hot topic these days. 
uh, for the past few months even, and we're getting, we're entering a new age of AI. That is something that we can cannot ignore. AI is is here and it's here to stay. It's, it's revol revolutionized, uh, it re revolutionizes everything that we know of um, and we don't know what the future holds for AI. It's only getting better and better and better. That said, I'm also using ChatGPT myself. I have a subscription. I use it on a daily basis uh, for multiple tasks. I use it for Excel formulas, for uh, charts that I want to do in Excel. I use it to rephrase my emails that I'm sending to clients, um, maybe getting something that I want to write um, in a different tone. Uh, this, this, this tool and others, by the way, because ChatGPT is not the only one. Um, like Google Bard and things like that. Uh, AI is here and it's here to stay. However, it's uh, it's an assistant. The the main core of the main idea of getting the listing done for Amazon is understanding the Amazon algorithm on one side and understanding the keyword uh, the keywords on your uh, competitors and on your in in your niche on the other side. So if you just you you can say to ChatGPT. Okay, here's a, I need a title for I don't know 200 characters. I need bullet points for this type of of this uh, uh, length of characters and the description. You can do that. However, you're missing out a lot because ChatGPT will write very good English uh, for your or your copy on Amazon. But going back like a few minutes ago when we discussed about why it is important to have the listing done right, is especially because of that. Um, you have to understand that in order to get your listing promoted organically, you have to have your listing perfectly optimizes, opt optimized for the keyword researchers, for the keyword research, the, the search terms that clients are looking for. If you're not doing that, you're just another, I don't know, like another listing on the website. You have like another Shopify listing. That is not the case. That, that's on the first aspect. The second aspect, is the Amazon algorithm. ChatGPT does, does not know Amazon algorithm. And by Amazon algorithm, I mean that there are hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of words that you just cannot place in your listing. Otherwise, you can get it suspended. Um, things that have to do with the environment, um, you know, drugs, health, health. There are so many subjects to, to, to discuss and this only this topic we can talk about for an hour but we have um with our expertise we are gathering and gathering gathering uh words that are blacklisted on amazon it's important to say that this is, is there like some set that you can find publicly yeah. with all of those that's words exactly, that's exactly what's my, my next sentence because this is not advertised anywhere so you can't like go to somewhere in seller central on amazon get this list and get this to chat gpt and have it organized uh, otherwise, it would be very easy. Oh yeah, it, it, it comes from experience, right? Over those it, years, it directly comes from, from experience, and I'm very happy to say that we have like 99.5% success in this, um, um, which we do, and we we are very conservative with this. Amazon is getting more and more strict each year. We see it in clients' listings. We see it in new clients. Amazon is getting much more strict. You have to abide their platform and you have to abide their algorithm. And if you don't understand the the length of bullet points, the characters that should be in each bullet points, uh, the words that you can and cannot use, the A plus section, the the EBC, right, the enhanced brand content, the A plus section uh, for for a brand a registry on Amazon, um, you you can't write whatever you want. And ChatGPT will just write or other tools oh, yeah. would just write like random English, very good English, maybe with no grammar issues, uh, but it will not buy uh, Amazon and TOS. And that's very important. So you have to promote your listings organically using the keywords and you have to understand the Amazon algorithm. Mm -hmm. so and that's let's one. let's actually go back nine years uh, when, when you, I mean, you, you started even before because you successfully sold your brand and so on, but let's just talk about, like, let's say, last 10 years of uh, experience uh, selling on Amazon, especially copywriting section, right? Do you think yeah. like it ha somehow changed, evolved? Like, is it more competitive? Is it harder right now? Is it easier right now? Um, also, 
special specifically over the last like I don't know when ChatGPT was released, probably like six, seven months ago, even more. Yeah. Um, do you think it's um, yeah? Is it more saturated right now? Is it harder to launch new successfully listing or people actually because of ChatGPT are doing it wrong? And now you can take advantage and uh, create like optimized listings for your clients. So, so copywriting has changed a lot with being under understatement because when I started Amazon back in 2014 and created the listings, there was literally, literally no competition. It was the wild west. Uh, almost any product that you got to Amazon at private label, you just put up a sticker and you sold it. It was very easy to get reviews. Uh, Amazon's TOS was virtually non-existent. So basically, the, the, the concept behind the copywriting and everything that we talked about up until now with the algorithm and the keyword research and all of that was almost not relevant um, uh, almost 10 years ago. This has changed dramatically. Uh, Amazon is also fighting Chinese sellers. Uh, they're fighting sellers. Uh, that are not uh, working with their TOS. They're, what do you mean fighting Chinese sellers? It, I mean that by there are many black hat tricks and, and sellers can do to get reviews, to get their listing promoted. Mm -hmm. There are many things that are going in the background, uh, which there are many, many systems that can do like blacklist stuff, um, especially with reviews, uh, by the mm -hmm. way, not... Like not, you can fake the reviews, do you mean, or buy yeah, the reviews? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and sellers still do that, um, but Amazon is is finding this. Uh, there will uh, there will be activate accounts in no time. You have to be um, very strict with how you approach your listing. Whether it's your image, your main image, you don't want to get uh, other stuff other than your product on a white background, not a text, not anything else, and you, and Specifically regarding the copywriting, you have to abide the Amazon's algorithm and the Amazon's TOS. Uh, if you if you won't do that, you are just putting your, yourself and your account at risk uh, because um, Amazon algorithm can pick it up, can see words that are not aligned with the with the TOS, and just can suppress your listings. Uh, that's on the best case scenario. In the worst case scenario, if you do that several times, it can literally close your account. And we've encountered this uh, in the past. Um, so you have to understand Amazon and how, how Amazon operates and how Amazon will promote your product. And for that, get someone the professional. Same as you go to a photographer and get a great images um, and a great way to tell your story, tell your brand story uh, with graphics and you know infographics, the images, all of that. You have to do the same with copywriting to get the, the listing optimized um, with the Amazon TOS, as well as promoting your product organically because it will directly affect your costs for PPC and sponsored, sponsored products. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, yeah, totally. Now, uh, Toma, if you could actually walk us through, um, let's say, a typical collaboration with uh, a seller of the agency, like how does it start? Uh, with them from you know just talking to you to actually successfully um, putting the listing live um, or maybe recreating the listing because I assume that you not only create re listings from scratch to your uh, um, to your clients but mm -hmm. also help them reinvent them if they are like poorly written. Yeah, so that's a great question, and the for us the process is pretty much the same. Um, the only difference between rewriting an existing listing and creating new content is with is that that with a, um, an existing listing we can pull up keywords from their ppc campaigns from previous data by the way data that we talked about before get like direct data from that product specifically to see what has already worked for them and keep those while dismissing all the rest so i think that's the difference now the product starts with, first of all, I have 12 people in my staff at, staff at the moment, but I am the only one that is discussing with and talking with clients. It's very important to me uh, for me to keep that personal touch. Um, more than 80% of the jobs that we get to Blaze are from re referrals. 
and re returning clients. We, we also deal with major brands like Hasbro, Hurley, Forever 21. These are just some of the big brands that also work with us. And all of those through recommendations. And I think the personal touch that I place to each order uh, makes the difference. Um, because I, the process is that, I, first of all, I understand their product. Uh, we need to understand what we are going to write about. So the, the process starts with an Excel sheet that the client fills out uh, with the important information regarding that product, their product. Um, we can analyze the keywords. We can do all the data, you know, getting to deep into the data. But I always tell to my customers, they, you know your product better than any other professional. You know your product. You, you know, you live your product. You breathe your product. You're emotionally invested in the product. And you understand the nuances. Uh, and in most cases, th there, there are some sellers that, that just copy what their competitors do and like see that competitors, I do the same. Th that happens as well. Um, but in most cases, you have some differentiation. You have maybe a differentiation in design, maybe a differentiation in functionality. So we need to understand all of those tidy bits before getting the, the data and the keywords and all of the technical stuff uh, to get the listing tailor-made for, for the clients. So mm -hmm. that, that's the process. Awesome. Um, now mm -hmm. let's talk about the um, sellers, um, maybe like not only new sellers, but like the sellers who are already there. Um, the most common mistakes that you actually see um, that they are doing so they can avoid them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there are so much. Uh, <laughs> I think... Uh, you know, we discussed about AI uh, and, you know, things like that. So first of all, everything that you treat your listing as, you know, in top priority. Because, you know, clients invest, customers invest so much in logistics, in inventory. They spend so much money on their business, but some just miss out on the most important stuff. And getting the listing copywriting uh, you know, with a, with a great copyright that knows what they're doing or getting their images done with a professional photographer, all of these contribute to getting your listing as best as possible. Um, because eventually you want to be ahead of your competitors. So you can be ahead of your competitors imagery-wise with great, pro great photos that stand out from your competitors. And for that, you want someone with good visual um, with good visual insights, like a photographer or graphic designer. And on the other side, the listing itself, getting it written by a professional copyright that understands the data behind it. Um, and the, the ones that are missing on that, so you will see images that are from like AliExpress or things oh, like yeah. that, very low quality images, the images that are not uh, according to Amazon's guidelines as well. Mm -hmm. like the, their minimum is like 3,000 by 3,000 pixels. Um, so very low imagery on um, the images. And on the copy side, you see just listings with random text, maybe well-written text, but very random text, no address, no without any address to uh, key, the keywords that the competitors are using, the, the customers are on Amazon are looking for. I, I, I see all the time like very long bullet points. Uh, for example, the bullet points on Amazon there is a limit in the algorithm to 1,000 characters for all the bullet points combined, and not one bullet point cannot go over 250 mm -hmm. characters. But what so will happen if, if, it, if they are doing yeah. those statistics like this? I mean, Amazon will let you submit this, but yeah. uh, it, yeah. they, they will punish you later? Or Yeah, so, they, they, so that's the thing. They won't banish you. It, it seems like everything is, is well, but... Amazon is very tricky on that because they will allow you to write technically up to 500 characters per bullet point. So if you write five bullet points, that's, you know, that's simple math, 2,500 characters, right? But the thing is that the algorithm, the, it's called A9 on Amazon, does not know above 1,000 characters, will not read above 1,000 characters in total for all the bullet points combined. Now, if you go over even one character, you, you write in all the bullet points, 1,001 characters, right? Then 
you 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 can and you can check this with there are multiple tools you can check it manually on Amazon the, to check the indexing you can also check it with other tools like index checker uh, by helium 10 things like that you will just see that part of your bullet points are just not indexed uh, and that's the worst thing that you can do because whenever you write copywriting uh, for your listing and you want to embed as much as keywords as possible those search terms that the clients are looking for, the customers are looking for, it, it, it just won't be promoted because the algorithm won't know about it. So if you abide those rules and get those, those bullet points, 1,000 characters in total, and not going over 250 per bullet point, because you can have one bullet point longer than the other, but it cannot exceed 250 and get the, the total 1,000 characters. So, a lot of numbers in a few seconds, um, <laughs> but as long as you do that, you will you will be indexed 100%. Um, and with the bullet points, because it's very tricky, because Amazon will allow you to write over 250 characters and more than 1,000 characters combined, that can be very tricky because visually you won't see any problem, you won't get your listing taken yeah. down or anything like that, but you will lose your indexing. And this can be verified. Like you can, We can verify this all the time. And this hasn't changed for, I think, about th two or three years. It wasn't like that before. Amazon indexed more than 1,000 characters. Okay. They are doing this uh, limitation of 1,000 characters in their algorithm for the past at least a year. I think it's also like two, two and a half years now. Um, mm -hmm. but that, I think that's the most common, common mistake. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, last one more question actually like additional one specifically that you we already started talking a little bit about the ai you said that you are using some tools also you are using tools like bart from google and i really wonder what's your opinion maybe you have some insights maybe not um on the um amazon search do you think it will change uh, with the era of ai i mean Obviously, Amazon is using right now its own AI to for um, searching. But I really wonder, will they somehow change the uh, search in the future that maybe it will learn? And for example, image will matter mo more than the actual yeah. um, description. Like, what do you think? Yeah, so as I said earlier, I, AI is here and it's here to stay. We cannot fight it. Um, you can you cannot you know deny it. It's here and it's here to stay. And it's only going to improve and only going to evolve. Um, the interesting thing about Amazon with AI is that Amazon is uh, is working uh, currently uh, on an engine within their system to understand text that was written by AI, and that will and will suppress this because they don't want uh, text. They, like it's not relevant right now, but they will identify in the future uh, text that was written by AI. Um, for us, we only use AI in our system uh, when we create the listing to have to help us get gather the the data more efficient after we do the market research. That saves us saves us like fifteen or twenty minutes of work, but that's it. All the text itself is you, you wrote it by your own. Got it's it. written for the client. Nothing is copied. Nothing is created by AI. Anything of that sort. Um, Amazon will implement. I'm sure of that. As well as any technology company, they will implement AI in other fields as well. I I'm sure that you know Amazon was already in like like used Alexa to search. You know that's very common. Um, all of those AI assistants. Um, I think that the, the the internet of things and how the, the the real world will connect with Amazon will be handled by AI. Uh, maybe take a photography or of something, and then it will search on Amazon. I don't. I, I really don't know. You know, it's all speculation sure. right now. Uh, but for the AI text and identification, that's that's going. That that's real. Uh, that's uh, th something that Amazon is working on um, uh, because. Eventually, they want to have unique product listing listings on their platform. That's oh, yeah. that's my conclusion. Um, if they're doing this, um, it's, it's it's very funny fight. It's just software providers they try to uh, give you AI to create listings, right? 
listings and copy everything for you, even like create images. And then Amazon is actually fighting against that. It's just a <clears throat> fight. And I see it in so many yeah. industries. So <laughs> Yeah, because, you know, eventually AI is based on previous experience, uh, previous yeah. or like what the model has already learned. Um, for us, it's a no-brainer. Like any, any listing that we do, we from A to Z, everything is written from and in, you know invented right on the spot uh, according to the client's needs uh, no text is you know using we don't use ai in the text anyway um, that only you know go with the amazon flow um, and how they they see ai because we understand that they want uh, original text in their system um, which we already do anyway yeah. uh, but that's something that we uh, if someone is hearing that podcast and they want to maybe think about it uh, for a second, because that will happen. Amazon is working right. on it. Sure. That's, I think, same with the Google SEO articles. Very similar thing, right? Yeah. Uh, Google uh, tried uh, to actually Google. punish uh, users who are writing, cop like all of the copywriting is done by the AI. So I right. think it's very similar. Right. Case here. 100%. 100%. 100%. agree. Yeah. But yeah. That is that is, you know, it's a very, tr very tricky. I think that like most companies don't know what they have in their hands. Like AI is going to explode. Like, if, you know, we only see the, the a very tiny glimpse oh, yeah. of what AI can do. Uh, I'm personally very worried. I'm very old fashioned <laughs> in many senses uh, to how our, our lives will be in the future. I think we're getting lazier and lazier. Uh, and that's a very concerning thing. Uh, I won't talk in this podcast about obesity and diabetes and things like that. That's, you know, a part of it. I think that, you know, we want to use the human mind as, as much as possible. Uh, getting, you know, AI and things like that can help us in many ways, but I think that can also take us backwards uh, in terms of how our mind operates, how we think creatively. Yeah. Uh, that's, I, I think, maybe for a different podcast, but oh, I yeah. think. That is something I, I, to think about. I, I fully agree on that. So, but yeah, Tomer, thanks a lot for for coming here as a guest. Thanks a lot for sharing your experiences with copywriting, with uh, Amazon, with uh, Blaze, and yeah, just for some few words, uh, where people can find you, how people can reach out to you, and uh, and in in case of having any issues with like copywriting or like some technical issues with the accounts, how they can reach out. Yeah, so I think that the best way is either to our website, through our website, which is blazecopywriting.com. Um, you can you also have their contact. You even have the direct WhatsApp message to me, or you can email me directly at amz at uh, blazecopywriting.com. Um, I think that's these are the best ways. You can also find me on Facebook, on LinkedIn, uh, I'm everywhere. Awesome. I will make sure to put all of the details also on the description of this podcast on my YouTube or Spotify or uh, wherever you are listening to. So yeah, Toma, thanks a lot. And we speak soon. Thank you for having me, Jacob.